Hey, this is James from Rare Americans, and you're listening to 89FM Radio Rock. Sabrina Alves, para 89 Rádio Rock, e hoje eu tô aqui com o James, do Rare American. How are you doing, James? Uh, I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Um, last week you released the album The Human Animal. I want to know what is the concept of this album and how does it reflect the band growth? Uh, I would say it's kind of like an exploration of the human experience. Um, you know, I think we all go through all sorts of emotions and struggles and traumas uh, in our lives. And I think we're all trying to figure out, um, you know, how to keep our happiness and our motivation uh, in this crazy world that we're living in, this fast paced information overload world that we're in now. Uh, and finding our purpose in this world. Uh, and so I think that a lot of these songs are kind of an exploration of that. Nice. Uh, I want to know what is the most significant challenge you face during the production of The Human Animal? Oh, that's a good challenge. That's a good question. Um, I think probably the biggest challenge was uh, creating all the animations and coming up with like the stories for every single animation because we, we just did it in such high volume. Um, so we had to be extremely organized. We had to come up with a lot of different ideas. And then, you know, to release a song every single week, we also had to be very organized. Now talk about the songs of the album. The Human Animal is one of the tracks. I want to know what is the story behind the song and how does it fit into the album's narrative? Uh, the story behind the song, um, we actually just wrote it one day from scratch, kind of everybody in a room, and we thought it'd be cool to have, we already knew that the title of the album was going to be The Human Animal, so we thought it'd be cool to have a title track. Um, and so then we started kind of, uh, you know, just thinking about all the crazy inventions uh, that, that humans uh, have made, uh, but also the incredible destruction that we're also capable of at the same token so i think it's this juxtaposition of like you know kind of you know the two ends of the spectrum of what humans are capable of doing uh and that kind of influenced the song what do you hope fans will feel when they listen to all the songs all the full album Ooh, good question. There's a lot of songs. So uh, I think fans are going to get a whole wide variety of, of, of different styles, different sounds, different types of singing um, that I'm, I hope that everybody has a different favorite song uh, and that people it's an album that you can listen to many times over because there's a lot to discover. And, uh, you know, a song you might not love upon first listen, maybe you're going to like a lot better the second or third time you hear it. Nice. Uh, this year has been incredibly productive for you guys with the release of two new albums. I want to know, how do you guys approach the creative process of these albums? Oh, just keep coming with ideas. Uh, just keep keep trying, keep swinging the bats and uh, every day just try to come with another idea and um, uh, not, uh, not think too hard about it. Just if you got an idea, go for it, try it. Why not? Um, you never know what someone's going to like, what they're not going to like. Um, so we've never really been afraid of trying new things. Uh, and we just literally, we just, we have an idea, we make it, we follow through on it and we test it and we see what happens. Just follow the horror. Exactly. What were the biggest challenges you faced during producing these two new albums in this year? Uh, I think uh, just probably doing things in this high of a volume is staying organized. Um, and when we decided to release a song every single week with an animation, um, just the sheer amount of work it is to do that and to be organized and to have all your content ahead of time to... Um, make sure that it's easy for your audience to understand what's happening and what's coming. Um, so I would say we just we had to be extremely dialed in on our release plan and our uh, just our organization week every single week. Let's talk about the Hair America's type of song. You guys are known for combination alternative rock with narrative punk. How does combination come about and what was the inspiration behind it? Uh we just have a lot of different influences in music. Um, none of us like the same bands. Um, I like a wide variety of different music from uh, indie music to hip hop to some punk rock to folk music to jazz, um, kind of really everything. So uh, I think that the song is kind of king and we've always kind of let 
each song be like a puzzle that we have to go and figure out um, and, you know, not try to force it too much. Wherever the song wants to go, we're happy to follow it there. And I think that's why we have, you know, such a variety of musical styles. I know that you guys have a project. It's a 90-minute animated punk rock musical at the NSC Film Festival. How does idea to use musical animation come about? Yeah, that project um, is it's not released yet. It's only uh, in the festival circuit. So yeah. uh, it's been a project that we've been working on for like two years. Uh, it's taken a whole lot of work, uh, taken a long time, uh, but it's pretty cool. We were really happy that it got into Annecy, which is kind of one of the world leaders in animation festivals. Uh, and we had two sold out dates there. And now it's kind of going through other film festivals in Switzerland, Germany, Italy. Um, and yeah, it's it was uh, it was an absolutely huge project uh, that we decided two years ago to make a concept album. Um, we had this cool story about these kids in high school. And once we wrote all the songs, we we thought, hey, why don't why don't we try to make this into something like a movie? Uh, it's a big project. I think it's a really cool piece of art. And um, through sheer kind of willpower and effort, we uh, we got it made. And uh, now that project will probably come out, you know, sometime later this year or early next year. Awesome. Last year, you guys were nominated for the Juno Awards in the Breakthrough Group of the Year category. How does it feel to receive this nomination? Yeah, uh, I think it was largely um, very validating for us. Um, you know, we haven't at that point in time or uh, we hadn't gotten a ton of um, support from the music industry, so to speak. Um, uh, most of our success has come from our fans and the word of mouth and um, our fans sharing our music around. So um, I think that was the first time we were like, oh, wow, we're being kind of recognized by the Canadian music industry. And I think it felt very motivating for everybody that we were on the right track. Do you feel that this nomination brought some new responsibilities for Hair Americans or something like that? I don't think we feel any responsibility because of that. Um, you know, awards are awards. I think what we care most about is that yeah, we're having fun doing what we're doing and that we're uh, giving our fans uh, continually interesting projects and that we don't start repeating ourselves. Uh, and I think as long as, you know, we enjoy making the music we're making, we feel still feel like we have something to say. Um, I think the most important thing is that, you know, our fans, uh, you know, that they appreciate what we're doing and that it still feels fresh and new. Good. Uh, I don't know if you can say, but what's next for Hair Americas? Are any upcoming tours? Yeah, we have a Europe tour, uh, which uh, is in about six weeks. Um, and then we're just about to put on a North American tour for sale uh, for uh, Canada and America. And then we are hoping that our fan base in Brazil and South America continues to grow. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to tour there sometime in the next year. Yeah, we really want you guys to come here with the growing fan base in Brazil. Are there any plans to come here or to work here? Uh, yeah, I mean, would absolutely love to. I feel like it's like a bucket list thing for us to do. Um, and yeah, we've really just started kind of cracking into the Brazilian market here in the last you know, few months. So uh, the minute that we have a good indication that um, we can uh, sell some a good amount of tickets in Brazil, uh, mm -hmm. we will absolutely be there. And if you do come to Brazil, what is the expectations about it? Uh, well, what is my expectation? That's interesting. Um, actually, our uh, a teammate of ours who does all of our video cutups, he's actually Brazilian. His name's Kaique. Um, so I hang out with a Brazilian all day, every day. Um, and in Vancouver, where we live, there's a decent uh, sized Brazilian population, especially in the film industry. Um, so I've gotten to know a lot of Brazilians, um, just great people have a real zest for life uh, and always with a smile on the, on their face and, and having a good time and bringing good vibes. So um, I've never been to Brazil, but uh, I can only imagine based on the people I know here that um, it would be a pretty rad place. Yeah, Brazilian fans are very loud and very passionate, you know. I love that. Um, is there a city or a country that you really want to perform during your next tour? Ooh, um, I don't know. I've traveled all over the world. And the one place I feel like I've had very limited uh, experience with is South America. So 
uh, I would love to obviously come to Brazil, um, you know, but also uh, more countries, uh, e even outside, you know, I'd, I'd love to come to Peru and to Colombia. And um, I know Rio uh, is obviously, you know, supposed to be a very special city. Um, and, and so I would I would love to see Rio and also some of the smaller uh, cities as well. Um, sometimes I, I like being in places that aren't the Mecca, you know, massive city, but to go to the, some of the, the smaller cities that have their own kind of character. Um, so, you know, I, I would love to, to see multiple places in Brazil and not just the big cities. Nice. So I'm going to play a little game to wrap our interview. All right. Um, I will mention a few songs of the new album and you have to describe in one word. All right. Okay. Okay, can I start it? Yes. All right. Stupid heart. Cat and mouse. Song for the people. Um, energy, power. Dead of the night. Lust. Young minds. Love. Lovers for an eye. Uh, seduction. Mm, good. Take it right on. Hmm, take it right on. Organic. Organic. But why? <laughs> uh, I feel like the song is like, uh, it's like made with like an acoustic guitar and some uh, stomps on the ground. And it's very, uh, it's very live, very real. And for the last one, the human animal. Uh, chaos. <laughs> All right. Um, do you want to say something for the fan base in Brazil or the people that listen to a 9 FM, the radio rock? Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Firstly, for the support. It means the world to us. And uh, yeah, spread the word. Um, you know, it's super helpful if you share our music around with your friends or you share a link to a song or a video you like. And um, that's that's the most powerful thing that uh, that you can do or use our song in one of your own videos. Um, that's the way that, you know, music gets spread these days. And, um, you know, we'd absolutely love to to come and tour Brazil and to uh, to make a larger fan base there. So any supports, uh, we totally appreciate it. And also sending us messages. We love to hear, you know, what you guys are digging and why you dig it. And uh, yeah, we hope to be there soon. Good. Uh, and just for you to know, I listened to the new album today and it's the exactly type of song I like. So it's really good. Congratulations. That's so cool. I'm glad you liked it. That means a lot. Thank you. And thank you, James, for chat with me. Problem. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye. Have a great day. Oi, 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 89. A Rádio Rock.